what's going on with you guys? Thank you for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Cleveland. So uh, we're gonna switch gears today. We're gonna um, we're gonna get a above the tank overflow box right on top of this 240. In this box, I plan on putting uh, some plants, so kind of like aquaponics. So um, I've mentioned that plenty of times. If you look at some of my older videos, you'll see that I did that back then. So we're gonna. Do it again now with the 240. Plan on doing it on all of my aquariums, just like I said in one of the last live streams. So uh, I said we'll do it together, so let's do it together. So first thing you're going to need is a good planter box. This was the, the biggest, cheapest planter box that I could find. Also, I like it because it has these little, this little area where a 2x6 fits perfectly. So if you need to put it on top of your tank, stretch it from side to side, you go ahead and waterproof your wood, set it up there, you're good to go. You can stack up at least two or three on this thing. So also what you'll want to do is, from experience, you take a look at the bottom. You'll see these little holes. These little holes over time, basically it's so you could drill them out. So when you do water your plants, the water goes through. So even though you're not going to drill them, over time, they begin to leak. So what I do is before I even put any water, put anything in here, I silicone them up. Silicone on the outside and silicone on the inside. That prevents that from happening. You will also need some bulkheads. You'll need some PVC. You'll need a nice pump. And you'll either need some plastic tubing or you'll need another PVC pipe. You'll also need some of this glue. Now, what's the reason for the tubing? So I want to use that tubing instead because it allows flexibility. I can put the pump in wherever I want to put it and it don't have any uh it don't stop that now if it was more rigid if it was piping you don't have any give once you put it in place that's it you know i want to be able to move this around if i need to etc etc might notice i already did the outline of where i'm going to put this first put the first bulkhead now this is the return now i just need to figure out exactly where i want to put the bulkhead for water in now this is what i was saying so we're going to have one on the back and i will put this one in the front that way when the water comes in it has to travel through all of the media the plants that come out on this side i don't want it just straight through i want to cover the whole area also one of the things i might do is i might come a bit higher that way the water is going to definitely get all of the lava rock that's up top and then it's going to drop down and then it's going to go out of the back so that's really up to you. You could either do it up top, you could do it on the bottom, you could do it on the side. Really up to you. One thing I do want to encourage is you make sure the water coming in, the pipe is a lot smaller than the water going out. If you have the pipes the same size, it could create a situation where it overflows. Because if you have a blockage, anything like that, it's just going to overflow. Water going in, water going out, same size. So make sure that you oversize the pipe going back in. Now, if I was gonna go buy some bulkheads, which already had these, I was gonna use these for a filter, I would've got a bigger bulkhead. But this is gonna work very fine. It's gonna work absolutely fine because if you see the small diameter tube right there, little small diameter hole, small diameter pipe, and then also I have a little pump. Now, you don't have to have a huge pump to make this happen this is a little five watt pump i will 95 gallons per hour flow so um clearly you don't need a big pump for this you're not trying to pump in a ton of water you just want the water to come through your your sump you want your plants to pull out the nitrates and then you want the water to go back in so keep all those things in mind so to drill out this hole you could come on this side. You 
see how, how amazing that is? That's just, that's awesome. So to drill out this hole, you're going to need a hole punch bit. And when you're looking for a good bit, make sure it don't go past. Like, let me show you another one. Don't do this. Don't do this. This is, this is asking for a leak. You see how, how close that is to the size of the bulkhead? You don't want that. You basically just want it to cover up the threads and then leave a ton of space. That ton of space is going to allow your washer to cover up the hole entirely. And then the same thing with this small one right here. I'll actually have to grab a, a smaller uh, hole saw bit. So once you find your spot, see, that's the size of the bulkhead, and this is going to be the size of my hole. Just like that. Easy enough. Now let me go and grab a hole punch that will fit this one. I'll be right back. All right, so found one inch and a quarter. Like I said, it sounded real snug. That's what you want. All right, so you might have missed that. That's totally fine. So in order to take these off, you just put a screwdriver in this side, take a crescent wrench, go counterclockwise. All right. Now let's mark where I want this one. I'm going to go right there with it. And again, you see the bit, you see how much space I have. Just like that. Now you could take a little piece of sandpaper and get all of the plastic out. Matter of fact, I think I will. Eh, it's not necessary. Seems all just come out. But yeah, you can if you want to. All right, so now let's put these bulkheads in place. Let's start off with the smaller one. Thank you. So when you put it on, make sure that the rubber is on the inside. So once you get it hand, no Carter. So once you get it hand tight, Carter. So once you get it hand tight, about a half a turn with the wrench. Otherwise, you can strip it, cause more damage, or cause some damage. So you don't want to do that. And then I would do. 
Now we'll go ahead and take care of this larger one. Now that one is a little, I'll take a razor and clean that up a bit. And the reason why I did that with this one is because it was a little, it was kind of sticking up a little bit and you don't want any kind of obstruction, especially on the side of the, the gasket. Alright, so I got both of those in place. One other thing you could do is put a bead of silicone around the inside of that bulkhead. Now if we do that, we are not going to be able to finish this, uh, finish this video. So, I'll probably do that after the fact. I might not. see what yeah all right now that should be good so look at that gasket all right so check out that gasket so you want to make sure that there's no gap in between there and the plastic so that's what I was kind of shooting for you know it's kind of it's kind of touchy you know what I mean basically it's like you don't want to tighten it too much and you don't want to not tighten it enough so now we're good. Should not need silicone. Should not need silicone. Now, I've already, should I do the media? I could do the media now. I've already pre-rinsed the media that I plan on using in here. Some lava rock, obviously, and then also have some river pebbles. Now, I might use all of a rock, but nah, I'm going to use some of these river pebbles as well. I'm going to put those in the bottom, and then I'll basically use the lava rock to hold our pothos in place. And then to prevent the blockage down there, also have this strainer, it's like a screen, and that will stop any of the debris or anything that collects in there from blocking or going inside of the line. Let's go ahead and just load that up. why I wanted to go ahead and use some of that lava rock, some more uh, river stone. So I probably will fill it up with more lava rock. I think I want it to be at least up to this line right here. But even, even so, that is actually pretty good. Now, the next thing I need to do is plumb in the lines. This is going to work with this uh, cement that you PVC cement that you need to make sure you have on hand. If you don't have it on hand, go grab it. So we're going to go ahead and just put a little bit around the outside like that. And 
it smells. So make sure you do this outside. There we go. I'm doing it inside, but make sure you at least have ventilation. This garage is pretty big. Also, I'm making a video for you. You're making a video, you gotta deal with some kind of deal with things that you might not typically want to deal with. Make sure it's wiped off. Once it hardens, you will not be able to take that apart. So make sure you know where you want it to go. Make sure it's in the right place. Otherwise, you'll be a little sad later on trying to pull it apart. You'll end up happening to cut it. All right. So that's the water going back in. Now let's go ahead and do the water that's going to go back. Well, go back into the tank water that's going to come into this thing. So again, same deal. Get a little bit on there. Get a little bit on this end. That's for that. And just like that, presto. Got it in place. So with this threaded side, I need to grab some Teflon tape and we're going to tape it up. So what the Teflon tape does is it stops any of those leaks. This is the good stuff. Some people don't understand how necessary this is. And this don't just apply to when you're setting up a filter. This is inside your home. Whenever you have water, if you have some threads, you want to use that Teflon tape. All right. Just like that. Now, now I'll grab this hose, connect it to the pump. Oh, wow, it's already cut for me. That's pretty good. So, I'll connect it to this side first. Oh, that's a little big, huh? Okay. Let me grab and grab my other one. My other fitting. It's good to have extra fittings. All right. Make sure we're golden. And we are, you see how snug that is? That's how you want it. So again, can't reuse that Teflon tape. Save it on there for the next filter. So like I said, we're going to do this to all of the aquariums. I also purchased a light for it. So eventually what I'll do is I'll connect another one, maybe two, to go on this uh, 240 and that's why I made this so long that's why I have room and that's why I wanted to do it this way so you can see that you're not restricted to just having one you've seen me connect matter of fact see what I'm saying right up top you could definitely connect it any kind of way cut the pipe attach it to another one you're good to go And again, you don't over tighten it. That's good. This goes right on. Now 
Now this, this clamp is necessary. If you don't have a clamp, it could potentially, it could potentially leak on you. And it'd be a little small leak, small annoying leak. So make sure you got a, got the clamp. Also make sure it's the right size clamp because this one's not really grabbing. Probably need to grab a bigger clamp. Let's try that again. Alright, come on, get on there. Need a glove, hold on. So I could use a bigger clamp, but then they sometimes get a little too big. So I'm going to make do with what I have. All right, y'all, so as I said, I had to get a bigger clamp, but I just didn't want to go that big because I felt like it wasn't needed. The smaller one is definitely not working for me, causing too much of a problem. I'm lucky. It's not the exact same size. All right. And this one will work. So again, it's good to have a surplus of of the things that you typically will need in a fish room. Otherwise, I would have had to hit the store and I would have prolonged this video much longer than what it needed to. All right. Just like that. Now, I probably will use, let's just say I'll use this much holes. My scissors, nothing around, huh? All right. You close this up before this dry out. Make sure you try to keep that air out of there. All right, now for the pump, same deal. Glad I got the bigger one. I know that's gonna work. Go ahead and get that on. Tighten this one as well. And that's a lot of slack. That's gonna allow me to really move this thing wherever I want. Obviously, more slack is better than less slack. I could also shorten it if I need to, but we'll see. All right, so that right there, y'all, is the sump. Now what I need to do is, and look at all that, look at all that slack I got, y'all. Got so much slack. And this moves around. So I have it either sticking to the bottom of the tank or I can move it wherever wherever I want. Now, lastly, we need the plants. So this right here is a pothos, y'all. This is a golden pothos. So um, this is only a $13 plant. All you gotta do now, when you have your plant, take it out the soil, rinse off the roots real good, then we plant it in here. I'm also going to uh, clean some more lava rock and get some more lava rock ready. So I don't know if y'all wanna see this process. The neighbor is getting his roof done, so it's pretty loud out there. So I'll probably show you, have I either record from the garage, and then um, we're going to move on to this next step when we plant the pothos. Let's get to it.
All right, so you might have noticed that I poured all the lava rock on the ground. The reason why I did that is when you have it in a bucket and you're trying to rinse off the lava rock, it constantly just all the little small particles of dust just keeps moving around and going under the lava rock. So by me pouring it out on the ground, it has no choice but to run off. There we go. That's how I wanted it to look. Much, much better. I like that. I like that a lot. So now, let's go ahead and find some places to put the plants. And they are going to spread. Not really spread so much. They're going to get long. Let's put it like that. The thing about pothos, they don't really spread like that. They, they just get long. And then you can propagate them and keep on planting them. So I'll be doing the spreading. So the placement of, that's where, that's where they're going to be. But I do want to keep a little bit of a, a gap in between them. Make sure the roots are covered. Probably gonna have more than I actually need. Got to get started on my on my next a little above the tank sump aquaponics. And so you could do this with uh, a bunch of different things. You could probably do some kind of vegetables in here. Same way, it don't have to be pothos, but. We're not really trying to grow fruit. Go. We're not trying to grow food. We're trying to filter this aquarium in a natural way. So that's why we've selected the beautiful pothos. Sometimes you could even just stick up both those inside of your in your aquarium in the back and just let it do its thing sometimes that works depending on the kind of fish I've tried that with the, with the fish I have and all they'll do is just eat the roots so obviously that's a no go so you can try that out as well I challenge you to try a multitude of different ways of getting your nitrates sucked out of your aquarium naturally see how hard it is for me to dig through there that lets you know how how good it's going to be holding these plants into place and then also the plants will just take hold of all these rocks, bring them together, make it real, real solid. Look at that root system. Now, if I could drop this in somewhere, which I can't, oh, I could probably drop this into the beta maybe the, the beta, maybe the, maybe the guppy tank as well. Yeah, so I'll probably drop these long roots into those. That's going to be nice. Get one more right up in there. And if you want to know how to propagate Poto so you're doing it correctly, I could definitely show you that because it's definitely a certain way to do it. When you do it, you want to make sure you get the nodes. Make sure you get at least three nodes. The nodes is what continuously sprout roots. 
See how that node has a has a root? That's another node. That's a node. That's a node. So you really want to want to propagate that one right there. But I'll show you when that well, all of these have really good strong nodes. So yeah, we'll do that in another in another video. But that's why I wasn't really wasting anything. You see how this one looks like it's dead, but you see that node right there? Two more roots are about to come off that. So even though this leaf is looking real bad, I plant this down there, it's gonna sprout some roots, it's gonna grow another another leaf, and it's gonna turn into another plant. We'll just shove this one right here. Right. And there it is, y'all. That's how you create an overflow box, overflow filtration that will allow you to suck nitrates out of your aquarium without having to put a single plant into your tank. Now, I should have done something with that one right there. Should have done something with that one right there. But that's an elephant ear. This is going to get pretty big. So what I will do though, I will load up this basket with some of these rocks to hold it into place. And when I put this light up there, hopefully it gets some light. Hopefully it'll do something. Uh, standing up on its own, that's a good thing. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, they got it situated so it looked like it was. That leaf is about to die anyway. All right, so let me go ahead and no, oh, Papa. Let me go ahead and get everything into place now. Yeah, hey, Pop. Sorry, elephant ear. I put that elephant ear in the back quite possibly get it out the front it'll look a little bit better put it like right here maybe or I put it on this side put all the plants on that one side let's try that so let me go ahead and situate this because I'm um, I don't I know you can't really see much and I don't need you standing out staring at my arse All right, y'all, so uh, I had to get that elephant into that, to that um, above tank sump right there. So now we got the elephant here up there as well. You know, that thing is going to grow a little bit kind of tall, but um, we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that. That's going to be filtering out a lot of nitrates. Oh, I don't have any space available on this joint. Okay. All right. I'm about to go ahead and hook up this three-way. Or I might have to come up off of that. I do need to get some power to this light as well. So let me uh let me do something a little different then. We're gonna have to Okay, well for the sake of the video. I'll bring this one on over. Go ahead and plug this thing in. Boom. Water's going in. Did you catch that water going in? All right. All right. So right now, we're looking for leaks. That's the main thing. And a nice, good flow. I 
I have a grow light that we're going to hook up right on top of this thing. Got to have a grow light, y'all. Oh, we got some anchors in place already. Got something in place. Can't use them, though. Water's coming back in. No leaks. No leaks, no leaks, no leaks. That's what I'm talking about. So now, let's go ahead and get this light into place. And I think we'll do a little something like that right there. course go ahead and make this easier for myself so a little trick if you have a situation probably should use a taller ladder because I'm over here on my tippy toes and everything I think I might make sure you got the proper size ladder. All right. Now that I have the six foot ladder be able to get up there without a problem so like I was saying a little trick go ahead and just screw into it either you can use a drill you can use a screw and you can use a drill bit or you can use a screw and that way I'm gonna go right into the same threaded hole I just made. Just like this, see? See how easy that is? Just like that. You gotta wait, you gotta wait, Papa. Papa. All right, and just like that. Now we have options on the length of this light, how high we want it. Obviously, that's a little short, but I, what I do want to see is where am I making my other hole? Oh, right, right there. Saw the hole right there. Carter, turn it off. Yeah, he, that cannot be played. Thank you. All right. It was already a hole right there. Made it that much easier for me. Happy about that. Came with him. Yep, came with him. Came with the light. All right, so let's see how high I want it. I might start off this high until yeah, the plant grow. Look at that. I could even bring this joint a little closer if I need to. There we go. Go ahead and plug it in and see how it's going to look. Throw this on a nice timer so I don't have to keep climbing up here. Boom. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. It's looking good. I like it. Now let me come up here and show them the flow. Y'all see how the water is coming in? It's going to disperse through everywhere and go right back out like it's doing. And then, like I said, no leaks on this side. No leaks on that side. There you go, babe. So, I would say this is a success minus, minus the fact that I don't have an extension cord. 
but we will go and grab one of those and then with this much room i could either bring it on this side that side i have options so that's why like i said you definitely want to have um, i need that that two by six down there i'll take that one thank you all right so that's why it's important to have the one where you could literally have the two by six stretched across. So I'm actually going to put this two by six in place of that one so I could move it however, wherever. But I really hope this uh, helped you guys out. I've been talking about it for a minute. It's been a while since I've had, it's a little heavy. slide this thing over a little more in the middle like that just like that so like I was saying it's definitely important to give yourself some some breathing room to move this thing around however you want and just like that I was able to move that so uh hope you appreciate this hope y'all appreciate this video thank you for tuning in with another episode of fish corner catch me on the fish corner nah but uh yeah so the same i'm gonna do the same thing on all these aquariums this one is next this green um uh, this green tank also want to do it on this one down here. I need a plant. I need plants that's going to outcompete the algae so I don't get as much algae on these aquariums. So uh, if you want to see that, let me know. I don't, I don't think y'all have to. This video is a great reference video and basically it'll be like me doing the exact same thing on a different aquarium. But that was fun. That was fun. So, so glad to have that in place of this beautiful 240 gallon I know they're gonna appreciate that extra natural filtration and uh, look no one more light one more Wally world light 20 bucks light so I'll also put down below everything that I've used in this video I'll put in there everything that you will need for as tools and uh, yeah so make sure you read that description because it's gonna be thorough Anyway, let me go ahead and put this away. We're going to wrap up this video, and then I'm going to cut y'all loose. All right, y'all. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. hope that you learned something. hope that you're inspired by something. Get inspired. Get inspired. I hope that I was able to entertain you in some kind of way. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Let you know every time I upload so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And I know y'all don't want to miss that pond build. So everybody else. And everybody, matter of fact, if y'all like the video, like the video and share the video. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Peace. All right, y'all. So we almost at 20K. We almost at 20K. I appreciate you all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Share the content. Help us get to that 20K. Also, follow us over on TSD with me on TikTok and YouTube. That is our other channel behind the scenes. You get to see all the behind the scenes content. Aida's in charge of that one. She's been doing a wonderful job getting ahead of me. So if you want to get ahead of me too, you got to follow over there. But again, I appreciate you all. Let's get to that 20K. Have a good one. Peace.